best software for photo editing is the topic of today's video. If you're new, please go down below and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and turn post notifications on. I'm Tutorial Tucker and today I'm showing you the best photo editor to go and edit your images with. It's a really good tutorial and I'm going to be revealing the software in just a little bit, but please make sure you watch the whole video all the way through because I'm actually showing you how to use the software, right? Don't just go and try and edit it yourself when I'll be giving you good tips on how to make a good image. So I would recommend watching the whole video. Please go and subscribe as well. Like I said, I'm making more photo editing tutorials really, really soon. And I'm uploading so many other tutorials around, you know, other best softwares for computers and just other general tips, which will help speed your computers up. So yeah, really good content on the way. Let's go and jump straight into this video. Here is the best photo editing software called befunky.com. But before you go click off, and check out this awesome new software do not because i'm showing you the best settings that you can be using to make the best images and just like be able to be the best um photo editor so yeah this can work for literally anything whether it be youtube thumbnails instagram pictures literally anything this also is known as sort of graphic design but this tutorial is mainly looking at photo editing so instead of making something like a youtube banner i'll be actually doing some more photo editing so the first thing you want to do is click get started and here you can go, you can actually have a choice. So you can go and edit a photo, you can combine multiple photos into a grid layout, um, or you can go and create banners, flyers, cards, and more. So I'm actually gonna go into that more soon. But today, obviously we're editing a photo. You then be brought this screen here. So all you need to do is go and find the image. So I'm gonna go and open uh, my computer files up. So I think I'm just gonna go for this one. I may have to blur it because I've got other files here. So I've now imported it. You'll double click it from your computer files and then it will appear here. So this is just a photo I took. Uh, it was my brother's computer. So it's just got a computer and a monitor. But to me, we can edit this like a lot. Like we can get these LEDs to pop a lot more and we can just add more other awesome effects. So let's jump straight into this. So all you wanna do is come down here so you can actually resize the image like a lot of people prefer that so if you only want it to be like a thousand um we can do that so a thousand two and you can still zoom in um but it will just when you actually save it it's that size so i kind of want it to be around um i guess around that so i might make, actually just round that to a thousand and uh, yeah then click um tick and now it's saved that re you have to take it for actually to apply so yeah the next thing i'm going to do is go and show you these so these little stars mean you need to actually go and get it um, you have to go and pay for the premium version, but there are still so many free versions like it's not a big deal, right? So because you, you can still use exposure, beautify color, um, uh, sharpen, I'll be running through all these and uh, yeah, let's just continue through this. So the next thing you want to do is come to exposure. Here you can like change the main sort of features of the picture. So brightness is obviously increasing the brightness. For me, this image does not need any more brightness. It literally just needs to be lowered a bit because with this image, obviously there's quite a few lights in it. So we've got this like sort of green color. You want that to sort of appear more and you've got the LEDs behind it and the fans. So obviously we want that to sort of be be more visible. So the best way to do that is to literally lower the brightness. So I might lower that a bit, but not too much that it makes the image too dark. Next, uh, we can just test the contrast. So it, like it, is, it sort of depends on the image. For me, you want to increase the contrast a bit, but not too much because it makes it too dark here. Um, and you can just keep testing. So highlights, not too much. Otherwise, it makes sort of a, too much exposure. Actually, I think lowering it actually, because we get that really nice rainbow sort of fan there. And the headphones look really neon, which were really, really cool. And then the shadows, that's obviously depending on the picture. For me, I want to increase that a bit actually, because then it stops the, the computer being too dark. Because obviously, you've got the main feature of the LEDs, but if you increase it too much, you lose that. So yeah, that's really cool if you ask me. You, like the, the plant looks really cool, the fake Ikea plant. And when you're done, make sure you go click the tick. If not, you lose your work. So click on that blue tick, and it saves. As you see, exposure applied. So now let's jump into Beautify. Click on that. And now here we've got less settings, but you can just increase it and lower it. So I, I assume this is more for images. I haven't used this much before, but it seems to sort of just add more like sh shadows. So as you can see, if we lower it, it sort of just increases sort of the effects. And um, how would you explain? Sort of just like the the effect around objects. So as you can see, like around the monitor, you get more of a glow. So I guess if you've got like a face, then you get more of a glow around the face. So that's kind of cool. I may use it a bit. That's obviously zero, increasing it a bit does sort of add more like effects to the computer like more led type a uh, type vibe so i think i'm going to lower that down a bit though to about 15. we'll try that we can always obviously come and change it you can click back off beautify and you'll be back here so next thing i'm going to go down is color so this is mainly like changing the hue saturation and temperature so i mean we can just test it out because obviously this is currently quite green we could add a bit more of a green sort of um, color to it just to sort of change the current green because if we go back what it originally was so this is what it originally was I found out how I did it you just have to click off 
this and come back to it if you do something you don't like. Um, anyway, let's try and increase the green a bit because obviously it is like a, a quite green image. But if we have it on zero, right, like the green does sort of just look quite like it just doesn't, it looks green, but not like a, a bright green. You know, if you want to make that green really sort of pop out and seem more visible, if you increase the green, like that looks like proper. Like if you've seen um, the Razer adverts, like they're so green, um, like that looks like the Razer advert really similar just because of how bright they look, which I do quite like, but it sort of makes the other image quite bland. But I think I might stick with it for now and just see how it looks. So saturation, you can increase that and decrease it as well. Uh, for me, I don't think you want too much. Uh, just a, t a little bit here because otherwise it just makes it too bright and then temperature obviously this is more cold and this is more warm so it sort of gives a more red vibe and this makes it more blue so I'm going to keep it pretty much the same I'm just going to go for zero actually and yeah I'm pretty happy with that I really like how much that green sort of stands out now it looks really really cool so I'm going to go and click uh, the tick and then we can go down and look at the next thing so the next thing is sharpens out oh, I don't really have to describe how to sharpen an image but it sort of just like makes it more clear like it makes stuff stand out more so if we do it more it's sort of it gives it a weird effect but i really like it like if we so that's on 100 and if we lower it all the way down like it sort of looks blurry when you undo it like it just makes the plant look really really cool like it gives it a complete whole different look so i think like a bit of an effect would be cool um so i've actually tried changing these we've got sharpen smart sharpen and just sharpen so that's oh okay so that's more sort of like the old look so i mean obviously it's a computer but it still gives it more of like somewhat of a not a retro look but it sort of makes it look cooler i could imagine an image looking quite cool like that but i don't want it too high i'm gonna try it with just the um the smart sharpen because that is more like i think it's more like, updated um so let's try and drag this up and see how it looks. So I think a bit would look really, really cool. But if we do it too high, like it sort of makes the monitor go a bit weird, if you ask me. So I think I want to go for like about, let's try like 10, mate. Because that's zero. Um, we'll see. I want to do it enough that it's sort of visible. Because I think it, like, it does the plant good. Like It, it just makes the plant, the, the actual bits of green sort of come out a bit more. So I might try that on 15. If I don't like it, I can undo it, obviously. Go and click the tick as always. And uh, we'll continue to the next one. So as you can see, this made it like you've gone over the, all of them. But no, you haven't. You've still got the blur and smooth. And you've got a few others down here. So, you know, we're nowhere near finished with editing this image. And you can add so much more. Now, obviously, you can go over the top of it, um, photo editing sometimes. Like, you can do too much to an image. Which you may think I'm doing. But the main purpose of this is just to prove like, and show you all the different effects you can apply. Like, I'm probably going completely overboard with some of these effects you only need to apply that effect and it'll make the image look you know a lot better um, than it was with the raw image but obviously i'm trying to show you the the whole um sort of process so you can add the smoothing that is mainly more for faces i believe as you can see like it sort of makes it look a bit weird although i think reducing it a bit it sort of gets rid of the shadow a bit yeah i definitely want it on zero i'm gonna keep it on zero click the tick and uh, we'll keep working our way down. So you can actually blur stuff, which is quite cool. So this is more like, I guess if you wanted to do something for like a video and you didn't have a blur effect in your editor, you could easily blur an image. Or if you were just try trying to show like, you know, one of those sort of reveal pictures like, oh, reveal this picture when I hit something or something like that. But I don't know, that's sort of, the blur is sort of, like, I personally wouldn't use it. Obviously I'm trying to show this image, I'm not trying to blur it. So let's go to the next one. I'll press the X there because I didn't want it. You've got the soften, which is really useful as well. That will just sort of, it's hard to explain soften, but it sort of makes the image like less glare. And not glare, but it sort of like as a nice effect. It sort of adds like a bit of a drop show. Like I think it does really good. If we press the X, like I think the soften is soften is really, really cool. Like it sort of takes away that um, over brightness around the, the edge of the monitor. And it sort of makes the monitor come out from the green. Like at the minute, the green is sort of too bright, but I think the blur sort of lowers it a bit. I'm um, not blur. I meant soften down here. It makes the green, it, lo it lowers the green just a bit and I think it's really, really powerful. Although it does cause a bit of, I don't know, it's so, I think I like it though. We, I'm going to drag it around, see if we can, uh, see what we can do. So if you have it all the way, it does take away some of the colour. So I still want it where it was, it was around 15 I'd say. And uh, we can just increase the lightness and increase it more. So I think it was about... 30 i'd say so i'm gonna go with that like i think that does the image really like a really nice effect like the soften um and the the lightness actually does it really nicely like i think it makes the monitor i guess it sort of puts some color back into the monitor we were making the monitor too bright for what a monitor and usually is like normally it's just like a black image right so we can go and click the tick and uh, yeah i think that looks really good that's my favorite effect so far um just adding that soften i think it's really done the image uh, like a really nice effect to it so the blur edges, that's like actually just blurring the edges, which, well, yeah, how do I say that? So from the sides it blurs, um, which I think is sort of unnecessary in this image. 
uh, depending on how much you do it. I mean, because obviously we've got a full image. If you have like an image where there's an object in the middle, that can look good. But because we're using all of the whole image size, it doesn't really co look cool. So if, if we had like, I don't know, something in the middle of just like a field, you could blur the edges of the field, which I think would look quite cool. But for this image, it's not necessary, but you can obviously adjust it. And I think it can look cool if, if I had one object in the center, but I don't. So I'm going to click the X and come off it. And then now we're down to the miscellaneous. So you've got the tilt and the tint and the color mixer. So tilting it is just like changing the angle of the image, which obviously I see uh, is not useful in this in this aspect. But if you're trying to make like a cool collage, that could look really cool in my opinion, actually, um, because you could have something behind it and stuff. So I'll click off that. In the tint, that's just sort of adding like obviously this effect to it. Sort of, I guess, making it darker, the tint effect. Um, I'm not really interested in that. But if you're doing like a more, if you wanted it to be black and white, that's how you would do it. So click X off that. Um, I don't need that. And then finally, we've got the color mixer. So this is if you want to add uh, these colors. So you could take away red um, to make it sort of cooler. You can take away green um, and you can take away blue. So it's sort of the RGB. Personally, I don't need it, but I guess you could add it to make more effects to it. But I think I've done enough to this image so I'm going to go and click the X because like I said before all of the effects I have shown in this video are basically to show you the the possibilities I don't think I've overdone this image too much um, but anyway let's quickly have a look at a comparison and by the way to save it just come up to click save and you can click save on your computer and uh, change the file name so I'm just going to say um, edited photo and then I'm just going to go and click save and then it comes and downloads it there so I'm going to open it up and then compare it to the original one so this is the comparison here we've got the new image and here we've got the original one in my opinion we've done a good job um, especially about this sort of the green color here I think the green looks way more vibrant and what I do like about the new one as well is the computer gives more of a glow like here well I guess it's quite they're very similar but I do prefer the overall glow in this image so yeah I'm really happy of how this turned out I hope you have found this video helpful please go and like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one Peace out.